Hi everyone, Zoe Trivik here, and welcome back to another video. So, um, the topic for today is how to feminize your voice. Yeah, um, this is a video that um, has been requested a few times over the past year, mostly in response to the, um, the new castle video, uh, which is being trans, the bathroom dance, so you should definitely check that out because it's a hoot. But um, people were kind enough to um, to give me feedback and say, you know, your voice isn't bad. And um, out of curiosity, like, how did how did you do that? Uh, maybe you should make a video to show other trans women or non-binary people who just want to move their voice in a more androgynous direction how you achieved it. And um, so yeah, because I'm not courageous, I um, I've held off like almost a year on making this video because I'm painfully aware that at some point. In the course of this video, I am going to need to demonstrate my default biological voice. Yeah, so um, we'll just burn that bridge when we come to it. Um, so yeah, I've finally done it, mainly because a friend of mine um, who's just starting her own transition requested it recently. So you know who you are, hi. Um, so I'm finally doing it. I'm just going to get over myself and not worry about it. It's not like it's not like just because there is a video with my old voice on it that that means that uh, people will immediately assume that's my real voice. Um, I should probably mention that I'm not actually, I'm not, I'm not actively dysphoric about my default biological voice because it's quite nice. It's like deep and resonant and sonorous and mellifluous. I have adjectives. Um, and yeah, I've got lots of compliments on it over the years, like literally like at least once a year, usually more. I'd have someone say, wow, you should go into radio or you should be a DJ or what a nice voice you have. Um, so it was always a point of pride for me and to have to jettison it um, at the start of my transition because it's, um, it's not consonant with my gender presentation was a bit wrenching because obviously it's nice to have something that people compliment you on and to have to like throw that away because unfortunately no one will perceive you as your actual gender if you continue to use that voice. Um, it was heartbreaking. So, um, so when I say that I've been working on this and when I say I'm nervous about demonstrating that old voice here on this video, it doesn't change the fact that I still like the voice in isolation. Like if I weren't on camera, if I could just like do like radio plays or something and no one would see me, they just hear my old voice, I'd be happy to do that old voice because I quite like it. But unfortunately, it's just not useful for like, you know, face to face talking to people or even on the phone because the old voice will just get you served, which is not very helpful when you're like trying to like deal with a bank or um, a service company. But anyway, let's get focused. Um, so um, I think what we need to do, because I don't have a script, I'm just winging this because unfortunately every time I try and script stuff, I spend days and days planning it out and then because I'm a perfectionist and it's a terrible, terrible personality uh, disorder, I would say, trait. Um, so yeah, rather than keep putting this off to make it perfect, I'm just going to sit down on a Saturday and wing it. So hopefully I'll cover all the, the key elements. But I think what we should start with is a discussion of... Um, vocal anatomy, okay? So when I talk to you about like how to feminize your voice, uh, those of you who are planning to do so, or for those of you who aren't planning to feminize your voice but wonder how I've done it, well, this is what I'm gonna talk about. You need to understand like what's going on here in the throat. So obviously we have our, our wind wind pipe, our food pipe, this sort of thing. But um, in this whole area, there's the larynx and there's the voice box. So you have your vocal cords attached in this space. And so they vibrate in the air and that air has access to your lungs, obviously, if you leave that open, it has access up here into your mouth. So basically, in addition to the vocal cords, you have these resonant cavities. So obviously, there's this tube here, the column of air in your throat. And then there's whatever your skull allows you to create a space, a mouth cavity. And obviously, if you have a like, very large jaw, like Freddie Mercury did, he could achieve these big sounds with uh, in, using shaping his voice cavity. And obviously you have your lungs, which has a, have a lot of volume as well, so you can send like the vibrations down into your chest and achieve this thing called chest resonance. So these are the key aspects that you're working with. Now, if you were um, a soined male at birth and um, weren't able to have puberty blockers to like pause things while um, you worked out your gender identity, then unfortunately, once you pass through male puberty, what happens is your vocal cords thicken and lengthen 
and that's a one-way street. There's no going back from that. So um, at that point, they are producing, by default, much deeper uh, frequencies than they were before. That's why your, your voice drops when you if you're moving in that direction, uh, puberty. So yeah, once it's happened, apart from like vocal cord surgery, which I do not recommend, it squicks me, the whole idea of somebody taking a scalpel to my vocal cords. Um, I'm just sure I'll come out sounding like a, you know, 10 pack a day smoker. So yeah, I don't want a raspy voice. I'd rather just keep working at it and experimenting, which is what I've done. So just be aware that um, it's all up to you to learn how to control this vocal anatomy. And again, it's not something that we are born knowing how to do. We learn to speak by mimicking the sounds of people around us. And so we pick up the, the, the accents of our community, our neighborhood, our country, this sort of thing. There's no conscious effort to like say, oh, I'm now moving my larynx. I'm pulling this back. I'm controlling what length of my vocal cords I'm vibrating. Oh, I'm going to stop air from going down into my chest. Oh, I'm going to direct air upwards. This is not something the average person thinks about when they open their mouth to say something. But I have to, and other trans people do to a certain extent. I am, um, I reached the point now, about three years on, of um, working on my voice, on this voice that I'm doing here on this video that I don't actually have to focus on each of those individual aspects. These are things that I practice in isolation, and then I combine them. Once I got good enough that I could do this without thinking about it, then I could work on this, and then when I got that good with that, I could work on this. So all these elements have basically combined. All I have to do now is like, kind of tell my brain, okay, we are going to use that voice. And once I do that, it moves, it's very hard to describe, moves everything into position to, um, to, to maintain this sort of uh, this range and this pitch and this resonance and this prosody. So uh, we're going to talk about all these aspects in a second. But yeah, um, my main message to you at the start, if you are a trans woman or a non-binary person trying to lighten your voice, A, you will get there. Don't panic. I know it seems impossible at the start. It seemed impossible for me too. Um, B, it's going to take a lot of work. Um, I mean, if you're lucky, maybe you're rich and you can go to a speech therapist. I don't have a hundred quid an hour to pay someone to tell me how bad my voice is. So unfortunately, I'm still waiting for the NHS to give me my first appointment at the gender identity clinic. And then at some point, maybe in two years, I will be, I think they give you six um, sessions with a voice therapist as part of trans feminine healthcare on the NHS. So at some point I'll have somebody tell me like how bad my voice is and how I've entrenched all these terrible, terrible habits and I'm gonna have to unlearn everything. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But um, in the meantime, at least this gives me something that's workable. It gives me something that when I have to speak to someone on the phone, I don't immediately have, oh, how can I help you, sir? So that's helpful, just getting away from that. So this may not be a perfect voice and definitely doesn't sound like it to me. I mean, I have ears, I can hear other women speaking. I think, wow, they've got such a good full range and my voice seems so constrained by comparison. But it's the best I've been able to manage and hopefully you, maybe you'll have better luck than I did. So let's talk about it. Um, yeah, you'll get there. It'll take a lot of practice and experimentation. Maybe you can get some professional help to guide you so you avoid some of the pitfalls, but I'll give you some techniques in this video that you can use. So now, being aware of our vocal anatomy, if you're trying to lighten your voice, one of the, the first thing you're probably going to think about is pitch. And I, um, I have an app on my phone called Voice Pitch Analyzer. Do I, oh, I even have it running. So, um, this is the problem. You get in the habit of just like, as it's, it's kind of like just like, I'll just see how I go before I start the video, I'll have it running. So basically it produces sort of an audio spectrograph and here I'll stop it because that's just a mess. It's obviously been running for like a long time. And um, there it's summarizing what it thinks my, um, my, my, uh, my average pitch has been recently. And I can find out what it says from the detail screen, 236 Hertz apparently. So that's fun. Um, that's a bit higher than normal. So typically what you're trying to achieve as a target for a um, for passable female voice. Now you have to understand there are women in the world who have very deep, naturally deep voices. So it's not just pitch that determines whether or not your voice is perceived as feminine. And we'll discuss the other aspects in a minute. But pitch is something that's certainly very useful. If you have a very deep voice, you're gonna have to do everything else perfectly in order for your voice to be perceived as feminine rather than masculine. So it's probably best to like start with pitch. It's also pretty easy to change because um, one technique that we tend to use as trans women is to uh, to start just by experimenting with like falsetto. Now falsetto is not something you want to rely upon, so it's just something to show you that you can actually get up into that pitch range. Because if you're starting with a very deep voice, 
my voice is the deepest. I'm sorry, my, my default biological voice is the deepest of any person I've ever personally met. Um, my, my average, uh, if I use that voice app, you notice I was saying that we want, I was just doing 236 hertz, and I'm saying that a target, a good target for a female voice is 220, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, my default biological voice is 80, 80 hertz. So yeah, the lower the number, the deeper, the deeper your voice. Uh, human ears, um, typical, sorry, I'm kidding my hair out of my way. A typical uh, adult human hearing range is, it's probably more constrained the older you get, but let's assume from 20 hertz is the lowest sound you can possibly make out. That's a very deep, deep, deep sound, like a pipe organ. You know, one of the low keys in the pipe organ, they press it and you can't actually hear anything, but you kind of feel the room vibrating. Yeah, that's just below human hearing range. And the highest we can do is like 20,000 hertz. That's like, you know, going to dog whistles, to like obviously dog whistles are above it, but you, you get the idea. So that's our range. But our speaking range is obviously towards the bottom end of that. So for men, it tends to be like 85, 90 hertz up to maybe 180, I guess. Here, I have to I'm gonna cheat by looking at my app. Yeah, maybe about 180. And then you enter an androgynous section for maybe 180, 295 or so. And then anything like 200 hertz and above is will typically be interpreted as a feminine voice. So, and um, then that can go way up to like 250. Like if I were to do a falsetto, which again, this is only a tool to reassure you that you can actually achieve higher pitches at the start. Once you've shown yourself that and experimented like with moving your vocal cords, or moving your larynx rather, and like constraining your vocal cords, then you can stop using the falsetto as a tool because it's not going to produce a very natural speaking voice for you. So let me see if I can do a falsetto. Um, forgotten how to do this. <clears throat> so this, this I think could be a falsetto voice. So what I'm doing here is basically, here actually we'll try and record this while I'm going so we can see like just how high this comes out as. But what I've done is basically pinned, um, I'm really tying back my vocal cords so they can't vibrate. I'm only vibrating with a very tiny amount of them. Now the good news here is that obviously I've achieved a really high patch. So that's kind of cool. It's very exciting if you're starting from a very low deep bass voice, which is what my default biological voice is. But the problem is when you, when you do a falsetto, you're locking your voice in a very tight range. So you can only produce well, maybe within five or 10 hertz of this particular frequency. So when you end up basically having a really hard time uh, expressing yourself because you can't say things at a higher or lower pitch. You're just basically all stuck here on a monotone. It's just a very high monotone. Okay. <clears throat> oh my God, let's not do that ever again. So um, that was it on, the, um, on the, the tool. And let's just pause it to see what it says. So, <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, that's not what anyone considers a normal uh, female pitch range, and that was coming out at 267 hertz. So, yeah, don't do that, boys and girls. Um, but it can show you, if you're basically afraid you can never get your voice up, do a bit of falsetto, then drop back down, and then try and, like, feel what your vocal cords have done, and then you can kind of, like, work on, like, okay, I need to constrain it, but not like that. And you can tend to work towards higher pitches. Obviously, if you have like this app on your phone, you can kind of like do a bit, look away, don't just they're watching it the whole time because you'll freak yourself out. Inevitably, there's the kind of biofeedback loop. So you're looking, it's like, oh no, it's dropping, it's dropping, I've got to speak higher, higher, higher. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is like try something, set the phone off to one side, read a bit of text, um, and let it record a section, and then look at what what the actual spectrogram looks like and what the average um, average pitch came out as. And then you can say, okay, so when I do this with my, my voice box, I get that. Let's try doing this other thing. And then again, don't look at the screen, just do the voice for a while and see what happens. And you'll eventually see like, okay, if I do this, I get that. If I do this, it goes here. And it's just a lot, a lot of practice. I think I practice about an hour a day um, of the first year of my transition to try and get my voice to anything that sounded even remotely natural, because even this doesn't sound natural to me. I listen to this voice and I think, well, at least it's not as bad as it used to be. <laughs> but I don't consider this to be a very successful um, female voice, but it's all I've been able to achieve. Basically, what you have to do is find your own compromise point between um, you want to get your pitch high enough that you feel that you're satisfied you're not going to be misgendered on the phone in particular, because obviously if you're in person, your clothes, uh, makeup, um, your hairstyle, um, your, your gestures uh, will all help people, hopefully, who aren't jerks, to understand what your gender is. Um, 
But on the phone, people don't have any of those other cues. So they're just relying upon your voice. And even if you start the conversation by giving them your name, hi, I'm Zoe, um, inevitably, if they hear something that clicks in their mind that the voice sounds masculine, the number of times, it's very heartbreaking. For that first six months to a year, the number of times I was like, how may I help you, sir? It's just like, I just told you my name was Zoe. It's like, honestly, just try. <laughs> but anyway, um, but you can get there. So the pitch is one thing that you shouldn't worry too much about because it will come with practice. What you need to do is focus on the other elements that, that kind of flesh out the female voice. And these include resonance. These include um, uh, prosody. Um, Trying to think of some of the other elements. Uh, obviously, word choices are a big thing. Um, kind of like uh, intonation patterns, this sort of thing. We'll try and get through some of these. But anyway, to, um, one trick you can do, speaking of resonance, is to try and lock out your lungs. So you're only vibrating your vocal cords and sending it, trying to vibrate into the air column upwards to come out. They call it head voice. So if you ever, like, are, if you're transitioning, you will hear the term head voice and chest voice or head resonance and chest resonance. And what this is referring to is like, which volumes of air you're letting um, get vibrated by your vocal cords. So uh, an important trick for those of us assigned male at birth is to try to lock out your lungs. So you're trying to get as little chest resonance as possible. And one way to tell this is to basically, you put your, got pendant on, but whatever, you put your, um, put your fingers against your chest, like right here, and um, speak, and if you don't feel any movement, then congratulations, you've locked out your chest resonance. If you feel a little, it's not terrible, you're not gonna be able to do this instantly, but um, if you feel a lot of vibration, it means you're just like, even if your pitch is high, if you feel that vibration happening here, it means you're still using the chest resonance, which means you're bringing in lower registers, which are going to make it tricky for you once you start expanding your dynamic range and you're like moving your pitch up and down naturally in the course of speech, you will drop down and pull in bits of your chest resonance and kind of a deeper timbre. And um, that's it's always discouraging when your voice seems to break in the middle of speaking with someone, so you don't want that. So ideally you want to practice locking that out. Now, unfortunately, you're locking out a lot of the volume as well. There's a lot of air volume here. So ideally you'd love to be able to get that volume. I can't anymore. So my, um, my default biological voice, which yes, I am going to demonstrate at some point in this video, I just have to get my courage whacked up for it first. Um, basically, is, I can do very loud voice. You can hear me, like, frankly, to be quite honest, like, before I started my transition, uh, I was the person, that was that person that, like, at a party, <laughs> I mean, I don't even, I'm not that boisterous, ask anybody, I'm more of an introvert than an extrovert, but um, somehow, even just talking to people around me about something <laughs> that I'm interested in, people can hear me from across the room. So I have one of those kind of voices that carry for whatever reason. So if I shout in my old voice, you can hear me blocks away. I mean, it's, it's scary. Whereas if I shout now, hey, I can't really get much volume whatsoever. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm aware of the kind of trade-offs that I've had to make to, um, to achieve this voice. And I know there must be better ways of doing it. So I'm hoping, again, with professional help, I'll be able to make my voice feel more full. But at the moment, I have the full pitch and dynamic range. I have enough dynamic range to get by with in a normal conversation, unless I'm having to talk over very loud people. And um, I definitely have enough pitch range for expression. So yeah, let's talk about actual use of pitch as emphasis, because Males and females um, use different modes of emphasizing things that they speak. Um, and so a typical masculine emphasis pattern is to increase the volume of words. And again, this isn't something we think about. This is something we've been trained, we've been raised from birth. Like, oh, I'm speaking like, you know, like daddy, or I'm speaking like mommy, and this sort of thing. Like, And so you tend to emulate people that you see in you adopt their speech patterns, but a typical masculine speech pattern is like, if you want to emphasize a word, you make it louder. Whereas a typical feminine speech emphasis pattern is to raise the pitch. So basically, if you want to emphasize a word in female speech, you basically just kind of like go up a little bit on that word. Whereas if you're a guy, you kind of like stress that word. So um, you do need to have enough pitch range, comfortable pitch range. So you're not cracking, you're not dropping down, and you're not like straining, going into falsetto. You need enough range to actually be able to do that in normal female speech to achieve a normal 
prosody, which is kind of like that pattern, that cadence, that rhythm in your speech. So this is something you'll want to work on so that that's why you have to make that trade off. You have to find us like, okay, I want my voice to be high enough that it's perceived as female, but not so high that I can't actually use it for all the purposes that I want to use it for. So let's see. Um, okay, yeah, let's talk about tricks for achieving that kind of pitch change and pitch range. So I've talked about like you putting your like a fingers on your the top of your chest, sort of the notch of your throat, and like feeling to see if like is there any vibration going on there in my fingertips. And if not, then good job. And again, you're not gonna do it perfectly from the start. But um, another trick. I'm very hesitant to point this out because it's a, a point of actual genuine um, bodily dysphoria for me. Uh, the Adam's apple. You, you probably notice in these videos you don't actually see my Adam's apple much. You're probably more likely to see it in the Beat Saber videos. I think one of the cameras is at this one from the side, so you'll see it then. But um, the reason you don't see it much while I'm talking to the camera is because I'm using a anatomical hack to achieve a more feminine voice. And this is to basically take my entire larynx, <laughs> my voice box, and basically pull it up using the muscles in my neck pull it up and pull it back. So what I'm doing is I'm elevating my voice box and I'm pulling it backwards towards my spine. And again, these are not things that uh, most of us are like, you know, I know what, what muscle I have to move to move my finger. I don't know, or at least I didn't before like recent years, know which muscles I needed to, to change, to change the position of my larynx, but now I do. So what you do is you try and pull it up and back. And the reason you're doing this is to constrain the, um, the, the length of your vocal cords, it can actually vibrate fully because you're then foreshortening them and therefore they're going to produce a higher pitch than if you had them do their full length. So this is a trick and um, by doing that you actually, because your voice box, the cartilage, the Adam's apple is just like this kind of bit of cartilage that's grown out and unfortunately male puberty it tends to grow out large. Some men have larger um, Adam's apples than others. And, um, and so basically, yeah, it's again one of those things that doesn't go back through hormones. Once that cartilage is built up, it's still there. And it's also kind of this dense object, so it's vibrating along with like the rest of your throat vocal anatomy. So if you can like pull your larynx up, it pulls that up as well. So it's kind of like from the perspective of the camera here, it's like just behind my chin, so you can't see it. I will, at the end of this video, God, I should just get over it and do it. I'm so afraid to actually do my old voice. But anyway, I will demonstrate by like dropping my voice down to where it was, and then you will literally see my Adam's apple like become visible. So as a hack for you as a trans woman or a non-binary person working on feminizing your voice, um, you can, if it's not too dysphoria inducing for you, like put your fingers on your Adam's apple and like just feel where it goes and like by practicing, by moving the muscles in your throat and constraining your vocal anatomy, you can move it up. And if you feel it moving up, congratulations. Now, can you still speak is the next question. But basically, yeah, that's what you're trying to do because it's attached to the rest of your vocal anatomy. So basically, if you feel it moving up, it means you're raising your larynx. And if you feel it moving back, so it's kind of tucking here under like the crease of your chin, then congratulations, you're pulling your voice box back, basically. And that will help. It will definitely, definitely help you not have to concentrate on like why am I getting so much um deeper timbre and deeper um pitch ranges into my voice because you just won't be able to generate them it should just naturally raise your um your default pitch range you just move everything up so anyway that's a suggestion um again these are all things that I can't teach because I don't know how I learned them I just practiced for years but anyway uh, let's see what else can we talk about um god this video has probably gone on forever I'm desperately trying to find ways of not doing the thing I promised to do. Um, okay, we're going to do this. Um, God, I don't know why it's so hard. Um, right, okay, so let's talk about... Right, let's just drop back down to my de default biological voice. So this actually, um, this is what I normally would sound like if I didn't adjust my vocal anatomy. Uh, this is not a put on voice. This is actually my um, this is my, my normal, quote unquote, normal voice. So let us go ahead and just for um, laughs because it's so much fun. Um, see what the the voice pitch analyzer thinks about this voice. You can see quite clearly that it's um doing a great job at detecting. Oh my God! Look, we have a peak. It's a miracle. Um, 
So yeah, this is what happens, and you can probably see, I'm just gonna leave this running so we can find out what this average is out to today. This is obviously my Adam's apple, and that's because I'm not bothering to raise and retreat my larynx at all. My whole voice box is in its normal, very relaxed position. I mean, this is very relaxed. And speaking, I'm not gonna shout on the tone because not only will I clip the audio uh, levels on the, uh, on the video, but it won't be pleasant. But yes, uh, obviously you can already tell probably just by listening to my voice that I can achieve a much greater dynamic range uh, than when I'm constraining it in the way that I described earlier. This also is a demonstrating chest resonance. Like if I were to put my, oh my God, yes. Um, if I put my fingers like on my chest, I can, it, the whole, it, my whole hand's vibrating right now. So that's fun. Um, so yeah, if you, if you sense those vibrations, you know, you just have to keep working at it uh, until you don't feel it there. And then ideally you can move your fingers up and up because if you can get to the base of your throat, like the notch at the base of your throat and still not feel much or any vibration, then well done you, because that means you actually uh, got full control over the position of your, your voice box. So um, I think this is probably demonstrated enough what we're dealing with. This is the opposite of head voice because I'm generating most of the volume and most of the sound here. Like I can feel in my throat and go, like it's vibrating all through my chest at the moment. So you want to cut that out and try and use this volume, like the, the actual volume of air in your mouth and just your neck, generally speaking, your throat, I should say, um, to produce the sound, to just kind of send it upwards. Imagine sending it upwards, up and out, up and out of your voice, uh, of your head, thus head voice. Right, um, I'm going to stop this now because it's absolutely freaking me out and I'm sure it's doing the same for you. So let's drop back into what I was doing before. Oh my God, that's so weird. Um, so let's see. So that's, um, that's where it thinks my voice was. It's actually higher than normal. Let's see what it thought the average was. Ooh, 105 hertz. That's really high for me. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that, um, that gives you an idea of where you can come from and where you can get to because that wasn't three years. I mean, I've been at this for three years, but I think I achieved, I've always close to where I am now within about a year. And I've heard from other, um, from other trans women that they managed to do it in like six months uh, of heavy practice. So, you know, it's gonna vary, but you're just gonna have to experiment and not panic when, um, when things don't actually work out immediately the way you like them to. But it all is experimentation. It's all about controlling this, learning which muscles move bits of your vocal anatomy around, and then just working at it, expanding your range, because at the start, if you've never actually had to speak for length, at length, um, at a higher register, it's gonna be uncomfortable, and you should expect that, and you should take breaks. Drink lots of water, I can't stress this enough. I mean, I actually haven't during this video, but I have a beverage, but it's still kind of warm, shockingly enough. Um, this is peppermint tea. I would recommend, if you're trying to work on your voice, don't drink coffee or milk beverages, milkshakes, stuff like this. These all kind of like will generate phlegm in your throat. And unfortunately, I love I love coffee and I love milkshakes and I love all this. So for me, it's a real trial. Like whenever I'm recording one of these videos, I have to remember for like the day before or at least that morning, don't drink a coffee because it will it will just ruin my voice completely. So there's stuff like that. So you may want to just be aware. Um, drink lots of water preferably room temperature water. If you drink cold water, it hurts your vocal cords or at least will make it awkward. If you drink hot water, that stresses them as well. So there's like all this sort of stuff. So don't make things harder for yourself than you need to be. But hydration, just practice kind of stretching, like getting the range to where you want it to be. It's like, okay, I can do here and now it's starting to break. I'll just stop there, don't force it. And you can come back to it like the next day and see if we can get a bit higher. That's what this this thing is going to help you do is like work out where your range, your average range is and how it's stepping up. And again, you're just trying to achieve something that actually feels comfortable enough to do for, you know, ideally, so you could spend a night out with friends and chat with them and not have to like give up on that voice at some point. So that's what you're working on. And I think that's all I should say because um, this video is probably now half an hour. I don't know, it seems like a long time, but I promise to do um, a video on this, and I have done. And this is the moment where something rattled loose in my brain, and I just launched into another pointless five-minute ramble. So I have edited that out from this video. You can thank me later.
okay, uh, that's that. I'm going to now cut this, cut this out, and see you in a Beat Saber video, and I'm going to do, again, another non-trans related video next. So, see you soon. Bye-bye. Well, wasn't that fun? If you agree, there's a few things you can do, like click the like button or leave me some feedback as a comment or subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. All of these things help. And if you'd like to move beyond that and support the channel and the videos I do in a more substantive fashion, I've listed a number of sort of donation options here on this final slide. Right, I think that's about it, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in future videos. Take care.